What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're gonna be going over how we can fix up some of the issues with our input buffer system and really finalize a lot of our logic there. We're starting to get into some of the more complicated topics. On the back end, I've been working on online networking with rollback and AI. And to stop some confusion from coming forward in the future, I need to make sure that everything is really working exactly how we expect it. Now, there are a few issues with these multi-input commands that we've set up throughout the series. In the previous multi-input commands episode that we had, we fixed all the issues for a singular command, but I noticed that with multiple of these commands, there were still issues. So one issue that we had fixed in the previous episode was spamming an input. If we were spamming an input like this, we could sometimes get a multi-input command to fire, such as the backward throw. And this is the way we were tracking which inputs were correct for that command. Now we solved it, but we solved it if you have one command that has those inputs. Additionally, our is currently held boolean was not working properly for those commands. So if we go to our mute MVP, and I'm gonna search the details for my commands, you can see on my backward throw command here, I have to hold light attack and heavy attack together to perform this command. You can see if I press the light attack and heavy attack together, I will perform the backward throw. That is the grab for it. You can see if I walk toward the opponent and use it, whoops, then I can use it as well. So I am able to perform the backward throw normally, and that is good. However, if you watch this window now over where the mouse is on the right, check these is currently held variables. They were not actually working properly. There were a few instances where they weren't being reset properly, which was also allowing us to use commands when we didn't want to. So now I'm pressing the light attack and it's checked, checked, and as soon as I release, it's gonna go away. Press, release, press, release. No matter how many times I spam this, it's gonna keep going away. It's not gonna stay and get stuck there. Same goes for the heavy attack. Press, release. Press, release, press, release. So we're fixing up that today. I'll also be fixing up issues for other commands that have multiple buttons attached to them. So for example, my X light attack is in this list as well. And it is light attack and medium attack. So having light attack and medium attack here means that if I were to press one, you can see that is currently held goes to true, and as I release them, it goes to false. That's working well. And I can also trigger this by pressing those two buttons at the same time. Now, when we implemented macros, we had the macros working for any command that we want or any set of buttons that we want, but there was another issue where sometimes the macros might actually fire off the first input given in the macro, such as light attack, which would cause the character to use the light attack command as opposed to the X light attack because the second input was not received by the character before they went into the light attack. That will also be solved today. So now you can see I can use both my macros with 100% accuracy. Here's the first one. And we'll go up to the backward throw again. And here's the second one. You can see everything is working as intended. And we have the results that we want in our game with these inputs. So we're squashing the rest of these bugs that exist. With all that said, we can go ahead and get started. So in today's episode, that's what we're going to be covering. If you want to get caught up in the series before you check that out, feel free to click this link in the top right corner right here, which is the playlist to the entire fighting game tutorial series. You can see everything we've done to get to this point, including projectiles like our fireball. If you're only interested in the actual mechanics for the multi-button input commands and the input buffer, no worries. I'll link you to the first episode of that mini series within this series right here. You can check out everything we've done to get those updates working and this system working. We are going to go to the code. The code is where a lot of our logic is for this. And specifically, we want to scroll down to our check input buffer for command using type function. We can scroll all the way down. Here, check input buffer for command using type. Now, in this function, there's a lot of logic, as I've 
discussed plenty of times. And we are going to skip most of it today because it's already been set up in previous episodes. The important part and where we're going to is where we check if the correct sequence counter is greater than negative one. When our correct sequence counter is greater than negative one, then we know that we still have to check inputs within the input buffer and compare them to inputs within the command list to determine if we performed any of the commands in that list. This point, we were checking all the criteria to make sure that we've pressed a correct input. Now the logic in this function is actually pretty solid. We don't have to change almost anything. What we have to change is the order of operations here. One of the issues I mentioned earlier in the episode regarding the inputs firing when you were spamming away. So if I was pressing light attack and I kept spamming it, I could trigger a backward throw when I shouldn't have. I should need to press the heavy to, to trigger it. That comes from this, actually. So before, on line 1641 here, I was checking if, and then I was checking this section right here. Then I was doing or, and I was checking this condition right here. But I flip them now. And the reason for this is that if an if statement with an or, where only one has to be true, finds that the first condition is true, it will save processing time by skipping the other statement within the or here. So typically what we were doing is we were checking to see if the type pressed within the input buffer matches the type expected from the command we're looking at. So essentially, if the command is to press forward in the light attack and the player presses forward, well, they have a correct input that is expected for this command. However, if that was true, it was then skipping the or statement and it wasn't checking against this at all. That would be fine. It's just an if statement, right? We know that one is true and it's an or condition, so why don't we just skip past it? However, something vital that I missed is that is input and multi input command is being called. So when we were checking to see if the input that we're pressing is within one of the commands that requires you to press and hold multiple inputs at the same time, we were setting a Boolean in here called is currently held. So let's take a step back and let's look at this function now. Let's go to is input and multi input command, then we'll come back here. Now, I've changed this function a little bit. So this is what it looks like. This is what yours will look like, the commented out section here. The important part is that we were setting the is currently held boolean to be true. This would only be true if this function is called. This is the only place we set this boolean to true. So notice if we skip this function call because this condition is true, we can't set our Boolean to be true, even though we have technically pressed a correct input. Because of that, our is currently held Boolean was not being tracked properly. Thus, we were unable to guard against it when we went into the if statement is input and multi input command because we were checking to make sure that this Boolean was not already true at the time of pressing it. Well, guess what? It wasn't true because we had already pressed the input, went into this function, and this function determined that is currently held was false because we never set it to true. We skipped it. Long story short, by switching the order of our conditions in the initial or statement here, we can fix up the issues with is currently held and thus we can fix some issues with spamming inputs to be able to trigger the incorrect commands. That's all we need to do. We are good as far as check input buffer for command using type goes. Let's go into is input and multi input command. So again, this commented out logic is what we had before. I've changed it slightly. Really, it's very similar to what we had. I'm just doing it the opposite order. Instead of going from zero to the number of inputs within the command, I'm actually starting at the number of inputs at the command and going down to zero. Now, the whole point of these multi input commands is that the order doesn't matter, but we search our command list currently backward. 
we go through the input buffer backward to make sure that we are meeting the the correct types because we only want to check commands and say that we have found them if we know that all the inputs have been pressed. If all the inputs haven't been pressed yet, we can't say we performed a command. Even though we performed successful inputs for it, we haven't performed it yet. So while it's not necessary for this at all, I think it does make sense logically to change this around to also follow that same order. It is up to you if you decide that you want to change this or not, but I'm just doing this because it does make more sense. It is more consistent with the rest of the logic in our project. If you do decide you want to reverse it like I have here, you can go ahead and do this instead of your regular loop that you have. So we want to loop through the command input type still, but we're going to start at the last index. So we're going to start, we're going to have integer i equals command dot input types dot num minus one, because remember that we're talking about indices here and dot num is going to return the actual number of elements in here. So we need to subtract one to deal with that case. I has to be greater than or equal to zero to continue the loop. And we're going to decrement from I instead of increment. Then we use the same if statement that we used above where we have our command input types has to match the pressed input given it by the check input buffer for command using type. And the status of the commands input has to be hold. That's how we know it is a multi input command. If this is the case, I'm setting is currently held to be true and then returning true from this function. If this entire for loop goes and does not ever return true, we're going to return false. Note that I did not do anything with the is currently held boolean here. Yes, currently, if we use the is currently held boolean, it won't work the way we want it to. It will have some issues. So I'd recommend just taking it out, although I would leave it in the structure and I would still set it to be true and false accordingly so that you can know when you're playing the game what these values are. Is currently held was useful for blocking spam protection, but now we have the spam protection bug solved. So is input and multi input command is now going to look like this for me. At this point, we've fixed up those issues. So I'm going to relaunch the editor and I'll catch up with you when it's open. Even though you did those changes, you might still see a macros not triggering the actual command that you have the macro set up for, but an individual inputs command, like I said, the light attack or the heavy attack instead. Something we should do in the command data table is change the max frames between inputs on these commands. So specifically for the ones that require you to hold multiple inputs at one time. So backward throw, X light attack and chest pound taunt all for me are these multi input commands. They should all have one max frame between inputs. For me, I had max frames between inputs is 30 on some of these. I think the one was only 10, but the others were 30. So in doing that, it was waiting that whole time after I pressed one for the other one. Now, the code wouldn't let it actually trigger that command because they did have to be pressed and held at the same time. However, it was being stuck in the input buffer waiting and being searched all that time. So if I pressed and held the other, I could get an issue where I triggered the command preemptively. Or like I said, the macro wouldn't trigger the command because now I have two inputs of the same type coming in. Max frames between inputs does work and it is used to allow the player to have more frames between their inputs and still perform the correct action. For example, on fireball, I have 30 frames between the inputs. If I change this down to five, it becomes very, very hard to actually perform. If I make it 50, it becomes easier to perform. But for these types of attacks where they have to be held at the same time, we don't want to have this as a value higher than one. Now there is something that's been happening for a while that we need to cover in the near future. And that is if we press certain actions, more complicated actions such as these should take precedent over something such as the light attack, because right now everything is checked on a one frame basis. Now that these issues with the multi input commands are fixed, we can work on getting that done. And then you'll be able to use the backward throw a lot more reliably than just pressing the macro. Now you should be able to go into your game, play it. 
and use your attacks as you'd expect without so many issues. It is possible that you weren't running into any of these issues before, as some of them have to do with your animation frames, some of them had to do with the command data table values, the inputs used for your macros, if you had other multi-input commands. So there were a lot of different situations here where you could perform, you could have some of the bugs or none of them, depending on your logic. But all these fixes I did are still helpful because they will prevent you from running into any trouble in the future. And if you were running into trouble, well, now it should be eliminated. So there you go, guys. That's all I got for you today. But I hope this helped you fix up your input buffer even more. If it did, please subscribe. It does more for myself in the series than anything else you can do. And I just really appreciate it. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership and Patreon members and supporters. Thank you guys again for all the love and support. I really appreciate it. Very happy to have you along for the ride. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. I'd be happy to help you out and assist you with anything you need. It's completely free. Like I said, guys, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.